Hey guys, uh, Brian Castro here from uh, Better Chess Training, and today I'm going to be playing a 2020 game on ICC. Um, with Easter coming up and just a little busy at home, um, I haven't had a chance to prepare uh, another um, lesson, but uh, hopefully this will be instructive. So what I'm going to be doing is trying to explain my moves and in this particular game and in general what I, i'm trying to do is uh, do a better job myself of trying to improve my uh, identification of my opponent's plans and threats and including that in my own play uh, both prophylactically um, but also just avoiding mistakes so here my opponent has transposed into the dutch defense and i am going to play uh, e3 with the idea of developing my uh, bishop so that I can um, so I can castle okay so here uh, let's see well I'm just gonna go ahead and castle okay so general idea here is he's gonna play d6 maybe d5 but probably d6 since he put his bishop here and then um, play d5 here. Um, typical plans for... Well, there's a couple ways to do this. Hmm. I think in this case, I'm going to um, develop my knight here to c3. You play this way. Okay, he's playing a, a classical Dutch defense. There's different ways to set up. If you were to play d5, sort of a stone wall, which is, would not be indicated here, but if you played a stone wall, then the idea of what might be to trade off the dark square bishop. But here, uh, my idea is to expand on the queen side. And because he's played this b6, I could play, play something like a4 with a, a5 at some point. Now one thing to watch out for here is uh, knight to e4. And especially since it's now supported here by this bishop. But uh, I don't think it's anything too worrisome. I could play a5 right here, but I might want to take a move. Now, I don't want to play necessarily play... Um, actually, this is interesting. He has already... This pawn here, can he play d5? I don't know if he's prepared to play um, e5 right away. And can I possibly get knight to g5 in? So that's one thought here. And then if he, so this is interesting because he doesn't have a way to defend it. Normally, uh, black will play queen to e8 and then queen to f7. So this is interesting. Uh, let's just take a quick look here. Knight to g5. And then even if he plays something like knight to e4, which would expose this attack, then I could either... Well, there's a couple things I could do, right? I can take his knight right away. Or I could take here attacking his queen. Then he could take my knight. Uh, let's see. And then I take his queen... Takes my queen. I'm just looking at the different um, variations here. So knight to g5, because uh, otherwise there's no way for him to defend this pawn. Knight to knight to g5, knight to e4. Knight takes e6. Knight takes c3. Now what I could do, he would be a piece ahead for the pawn. So I could take the queen and then if he takes my nut or he takes my queen
I just want to make sure I'm ahead at the end of that. Um, then I can take his bishop. And then he can move back to c3. I think, let's see, uh, bishop, queen, queen. I think I'm ahead of pawn after that exchange because then if he tries to retreat his queen, I can play a5 and get my uh, knight out. So I think that's okay. Now it's a little bit of a longer time control. I wanted to, I've been playing a little bit of Blitz lately and uh, Blitz is fun and I think it does have some um, benefits, but I think we have to also make sure that we are, uh, you know, I, I think it does take away from um, some things, you know, it, it, it gets us used to looking at things superficially. Which is why longer longer games in general, if, you, if especially if you're training for standard uh, time control tournaments, um, is definitely beneficial. See, my idea here, too, is that now if he tries to advance this, I can just fork his queen and his, uh, and his knight here. Okay. So here I basically get a free pawn. So uh, that's good. Now, this is the key here. We have to be very careful not to get too uh, overconfident because now we're ahead of pawn. I'm attacking his rook, so this will give me a chance to escape with my my knight as well. And I'd probably play knight to... I could just play knight to uh, f4 again. Or, I'm sorry, knight to g5. And then back to f3. Or I can play knight to f4. But then he's got this g5, which you know, wouldn't be the end of the world. But I mean, the other idea, can I just play d5 here? Just lock this guy in. Because I've got the one... You know, locks this bishop out, um, but then he might play c6 at some point. Of course, I could just play my knight back to a four then. So, actually, a lot of options here. And actually, I don't need to move the knight yet. It's not being directly attacked. This could be uh, interesting. This could be very annoying to him here having this uh, knight here. Let's see. So d5, the only thing there, it gives him the e5 square. So I think I'm not going to do that. I don't want to give him... I have an extra pawn now, so I, I think I'm winning... But I don't want to give him anything. Should I just bring my knight back? And if I bring it back, should I bring it back to f4? Or to g5. I kind of like f4. I think it stands well in f4. And if he ever pushes g5, I could always play knight to h5, threatening this knight in exchange here. So I think f4 is the is the move to make here. So you have to be careful when you're advancing these pawns. You want to understand which holes there are. So in this case, having a knight here might have been good, and analyzing it later, I might find out that maybe I should have. But um, by playing 
d5, he gives this knight now, you know, gets his knight to e5, which is would be nice for him. And it, it'd be hard to hold this, I think. Okay. So it looks like he's bringing this knight around, in any case, to maybe try to exchange off this knight, which I'd be okay with. Okay, now with that in mind, uh, I think I'm setting my sights on the queen side. He does have uh, a couple of, well, a couple of ideas I have. I could exchange off this bishop, which I think might be a good thing. Uh, I could play a5 with uh, threats of either exchanging or advancing to take more space here. At some point, I could maybe play a c5 uh, break as well. So uh, a lot of ideas here. Um, let's see here. Do I, if I play, problem is if I, let's see. I think I might want to take or uh, advance this first before I play. Because if I play this uh, bishop to f3, he could play bishop to a6 attacking this pawn. And I don't necessarily want to play, well, in that case, I could play b6. So the question is, which one to do first? I, I like both ideas. Um, I think trying to exchange off this bishop could be positive for me in being able to pressure this queen side. However, oh, let's see here. Pursuing this first with the option to trade it later, because this bishop is fairly useful down this diagonal as well. Let's see, there are no immediate threats I can see. If he plays knight to e4... I could either I could play something like queen to b3 or c2 or just snap it off. I don't have to make that decision right now. At least I don't think I have to. But. Even though there's a slightly longer time control, I do need to mind my time as well. So as I mentioned before, I'm trying to work on um, my identification of my opponent's plans and his threats. Uh, it's something I've noticed both in my tournament games as well as my online games um, that I've been... And again, I think maybe this has to do with playing a lot of uh, Blitz lately, is trying to be more thoughtful in my games. And so um, recording this, I think, hopefully is uh, going to help there as well. So let's see. A um, couple other things I need to tend to positionally. Uh, deciding what to do with this bishop might be good, as well as moving my queen off here. What I'd like to do, if I do, if he does open up, for example, if he takes here on a5, I am going to take back with the rook. And then... Uh, if I can move these guys out of the way, get the other rook in. Okay, it's playing g4 here. And as I mentioned before, um, I can play knight to h5 here, which would be interesting. The only thing now that I'm looking at it that I have to be careful of is him playing g4, kind of locking this, um, this guy in. So I actually could retreat, and I could do it a couple ways. I could go back to h um, Actually, this might go back to h3. I could... Oh, you know what? Knight to h5 might be good, because if he takes here, I get a hit on this rook before... Um, you know, I get a hit in on this rook before... Uh, before he can lock me out with g4. Uh, the other option is knight to h3, attacking this pawn. The other option would be knight to d3. Knight to d3... Well, could be interesting. I guess, do I, do I want to be exchanging? The only thing here is... Exchanging might be good for, for me to kind of blunt these forces here on the king side. Because that is Black's plan, is to you know push these guys down here on the king side. Okay, well, let's go for it. 
And the whole idea too is sometimes when you're, you know, we, we're minding the clock. We're always trying to play our best moves during the game, but um, sometimes we need to try out an idea. And the key there is to learn from it and analyze it after the game. Okay, so very important. That's another thing I'm trying to work on is my consistency with analyzing um, all of my games. I mainly spend a lot of time on my tournament games, but I also want to be mindful of learning from all of my games. Okay, okay, knight to g6. Huh, interesting. Very interesting move here. And I think I'm going to go ahead and take this guy off here. Well, again, a lot of decisions here. I think um, does putting this bishop here help him? I don't. I don't know. Let's see. So my idea here, if, what if I could take here? And that puts his bishop on f6. He might try some type of c5 break, maybe, but um, I think what I would do then, then is start to develop my bishop here and my queen here and start to get a little pressure in on him. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Before I do that, uh, so um, so c5 would be a little bit dangerous. we got to watch out for that. Um, as it stands now, uh, f4 could be an issue. So I do want to keep this bishop here because I could actually get it in here, um, maybe. And actually, another idea would be something like now queen to b3 could be a little dangerous for because of the c5 break. Here, a6 could be interesting because well, he could get his bishop back around this way. I was thinking I would uh, drive his bishop away. Um, queen to b3 is important, could be important here. Uh, play my bishop over as well. Um, only defect of playing queen to b3 is that um, I no longer have these, you know, these bishop can't move along here freely. With these guys here. So, because now, besides f4, he also has things like annoying things like knight to h, knight to h4. Another idea would be something like, uh, well, I want to play knight d5 right away. That was one idea. Bishop to f3, trading these guys off, followed by knight to d5. Another idea here is uh, just simply b5, which would help secure against c6, and then do that plan with trading off. How do I handle f4, though? So b5, f4, and I don't think I should take. But then how do I handle f3? Well, I think I can handle f3 now, because so I have to keep my queen at home. I don't think I need to, I can play that right now. So I think b5 works. Uh, the reason why a queen might be needed to defend over here and support this bishop. Okay, as we can see here, I'm down a little on the clock, so I'm going to try to think a little quicker and maybe talk a little less, so we'll see what happens. I want to keep the tension here as long as possible, but at some point I might need to release it if my pieces are needed elsewhere. So the nice thing about this move is that now if I do play a6, then 
I'm going to potentially capture this bishop. Which would be good. Because anytime... Actually, this is good. If I can play a6, and he plays bishop to e4, which would be his only safe square, then I take it with the knight, and then after the knight, and then after that's taken, if he takes back with the rook, for example, then I have the skewer of his two rooks here. Now, what he might do right now is move his queen out of the way so that his bishop can retreat. Okay, so this forces him to take here, which is kind of what I wanted in any case. Uh, taking back, so now I can actually put some pressure on a6. He might actually play a6, or a7, he might actually play a6 himself, which, um, which is okay too. But now um, I can play a little more actively on the queen side and look at trying to... Uh, Okay, so this is interesting. He now plays, I was expecting f4, but he plays g4. It don't, doesn't look like a great move. The only thing I'm thinking is he might be planning something like knight to h4 to here. <sighs> so one idea is g3 to stop it. What are some other ideas? Um, I can continue with my development here on the uh, with my bishop and then my queen and then um, and then get my other rook to the a file so is this a credible threat if he plays Knight to h4, he would be threatening this twice, so I'd have to defend that somehow. And playing g3 after he gets his knight to h4 would be bad. So even though I, I like my position, I'm actually a pawn ahead, he does have some threats here that I need to be careful of. And he's offering me a draw, so that's kind of uh, kind of interesting. But uh, I'm not going to take it. So what I did here is queen to b3, and then advancing c5. So that's could be interesting as well. Um, so I'm thinking if he plays knight to h4. Could just prevent it with g3 but then it gives him a hook to play h5 so let's see here so many decisions problem with being a little more thoughtful when you're playing is that uh now it uh um it takes up more time So what my tactical trick here is if I play queen to b3, plays knight to h4, then I play c5, check, and then I play c6. But I'm actually thinking I want to play g3 just to stop any shenanigans right now. And then I'm going to play queen to b3 if given time. And then bishop to d2 because I think my bishop needs to stay along here. And then I could also come back to defend if I need to. And then finally, I'll have a little pressure here. One thing I have to be careful of, too, sometimes I have uh, opponents that uh, will offer me a draw when I'm winning and I get annoyed, and it causes me to play more aggressively than maybe I, I should. So I do, do need to be careful about that, too. So think about that. When you're analyzing your game, you're not just analyzing for the moves that you play, but you want to also analyze kind of the uh, metagame in terms of your emotions and uh, how you're feeling about the different positions um, how you react based on your feelings so so we'll see and again uh, um, 
it's not something it's something that develops over time we even see it at grandmaster play right if you read some of the uh annotations for some master games you'll notice uh that a lot of players will uh you know play more aggressively or they'll make moves based on like how they're feeling or their emotions as opposed to what's actually happening on the board. So everyone needs to, whether you're a grandmaster or a, uh, you know, just an amateur player, you need to be, you need to be mindful of that. So what I'm expecting here now, so F uh, four is kind of not really in the mix right now, but H five is. So we need to act a little with a little urgency on our side. Um, okay, so knight to, so what is he trying to do here? So I think he's trying to maneuver all the way over to here. So I need to move quickly and attempt to um, see what I can do to uh, blunt that. Um, now I could, you know, actually a move I could do, which I haven't really considered, actually I could play queen to b3 first to see about this uh, check threat, but um, I think I do need to do that. But eventually I could play something like d5. I can't do it right now because my knight is hanging, but it's something that I'm going to think about. Okay, queen to b3. Again, I'm going to play a little bit quicker. Now I do get 20 seconds added onto my clock. The uh, time control here is 20-20, but... I want to make sure I have some more time to think. Okay, he's going to move over. That's going to give me time to play uh, my bishop here. And another just thought I didn't mention before is when I get this rook over, this bishop is going to drop back to f8 and can now um, defend along here. So I think that's what I'm going to do as well. So here, the, the obviously intention, I believe, is playing to uh, g5. So that he can get in here, and actually he can get in here too. So this is actually um, maybe a little more dangerous than I anticipated. Um, so I have to be careful of that. Okay, so I'm going to play. So let me plan for that. Rook to a1, rook f to a1, knight to g5, and then I have to get this. Well, I have to be careful now because he's got this guy's hanging now. So do I have time to get my bishop over? Rook f to a1, knight to g5. He's threatening here. Now what I could do is if he plays there then block off with d5. Just shut down this bishop altogether. So then if he gets the knight check in here, for example, I can actually play something like king to g2. Okay, so I think that's, I think rook f to a1 is safe. In fact, I, I, I need to get that in, I think, in order to I do have to be careful. This bishop's coming down here, so d5 is a little tricky. But even so, I do have threats too. So I have to, even though I'm, I'm worried about my opponent's threats, I do need to be aware that I, I also am, you know, my game is not horrible at this point. Okay, so this check is okay for me, I think. Uh, this check, I have to be careful of, for example, because he's got the, the F2, so I have to stay close to F2. So uh, actually this check too, I need to, you know, getting that bishop there will be quite annoying. Um, and I can't bring my bishop over quite yet. So how can we handle this? I can play D5 now, which would you know, block off um, this bishop. What other options do I have? So if he gets this knight check in, that wouldn't be so bad.
the only problem is here, now if he plays something like this, then my... Uh, so d5 is a little dangerous right now. I could ignore him and play rook takes here. And then if he takes knight check here, then I would just scooch over to f1. If he plays his knight check here, I think I might have to take it. And then he takes back with his bishop, which and it will take him a few moves to get his queen over here, in which time I can bring over a defender, uh, namely uh, probably my queen at this point. So do I have time to do that, though? Okay. Playing a little bit, this is a little, little tricky. A little tricky. I actually could play my knight to d5 as well, which would block. I guess my whole point is here is that this guy, this pawn can be, I don't have to take this right away. And taking it right away might not be, you know, he could double my pawns, but at the very least, this 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 bishop's a little dangerous. So knight to d5 is actually the move I'm going to play. Now, he does get, he might get his knight in here, which is one thing. But he has to do something about this knight because of this guy here. Because his, his uh, bishop is hanging. Actually, if he doesn't, he probably should exchange this. Because if he doesn't exchange it, then I can just drop back with knight to f4. And then this knight would have a very nice defensive position for me. So this is not the perfect game, but uh, hopefully it makes a little sense. By the way, now with this knight on d5, this uh, threat is a little more powerful because c6 is now, if he has to bring his queen over, c6 is now hanging as well. So this is uh, kind of a good illustration of what happens when you win material, sometimes because of the time it takes to win the material, uh, your opponent, and maybe because of some inefficient moves on my part, uh, your, my opponent has some counterplay and, uh, you know, definitely something I have to be careful of. Okay. And this is kind of what I wanted. Now, like I said, this pawn is a little weak, but these pawns are going to remain weak and I've got some play, whereas this dangerous bishop is now gone. So the uh, the knight threats are not as, as dangerous, I guess you could say. Okay. Um, this is interesting. Uh, the only problem it, now, so he made a miscalculation because now this, oh, he's got that knight check coming in. Okay. Depends on how he wants to do this. Um, okay, I have to take, I think, because he's threatening this guy. So this is something I did not foresee. Yeah, he cannot play. So if he plays this knight check here, I can defend this. Okay, so here, well, this is interesting. Now we've got a little bit of a, so I'm taking this guy, and I think my position is solid now. He did not, so... We traded minor pieces, so I'm actually ahead of piece. I think he uh, he sacrificed the piece thinking he would win this piece, but he did not see that this knight was hanging. Okay, and here, because of the situation, um, I can actually just block off his... Well, let me look at this. I can actually block off his queen, his queen being able to, uh, you know, oversee his rook here. And then I could actually attack his rook. 
or just continue on with my attack here. So, um, let's see here. I'm just looking at bishop to e3 and then f5. Well, with time looping, I should just take this. And here it's just a matter of being um, safe and careful. And I can exchange this rook off easily enough. The question is whether or not I can win the rook. Can I win the rook with, for example, okay, so he's gonna, he's blocking me off here from playing. So it might just be best to trade the rooks off. Because I have a piece ahead. Um, can I trade the queen off? Do I want to trade the queen off? No, I don't want to trade the queen off yet because it's protecting, there's too many things being protected here. But what I could do, so a couple options. I can trade this rook off with rook 5 to a2, which would force the rook trade. Um, I can also take this pawn, but after those trades, I feel that my back rank is, well, that, that would actually not be good because he's covering this square now. So I cannot, so I need to trade off this rook. Then pretty much all the danger is gone. So in this case, because I'm up a bit of material, uh, up a whole piece, I need to just make sure he doesn't checkmate me, which if I would have taken on a7, he would have taken with the rook, and if I take back, then it's checkmate here on e1, which of course would not be good at all. Okay, he's going to take back. Should I take back with the rook or with the queen? Um, in this case, I'm going to, um, I'm going to take back with the queen. Uh, I just want to keep my back rank uh, secure for now. And it pretty well, the only downside to that is I gave him an entry point here which shouldn't be too big of a deal, but we always want to be on the safe side. Okay, here he's trying to break through on the king side. And so what I'm going to do first, let's see here. Do I give back material? Uh, I could give back material to try to uh, trade down a little bit. Um, I could actually play something like bishop to g5 to prevent to prevent this, or I could just take. Uh, see, the thing he's threatening this as well. So I'm actually thinking. Um, Bishop to g5, then a move like um, queen to d2. Queen to d2 with the idea of rook to e1. So I think I need to stop this here. So my position is a little bit, a little bit dangerous. The nice thing, thing this does is it also introduces this check, which could be uh, useful at some point. So what I'm doing, I'm giving up this pawn here, which is actually okay. Because if he actually takes this pawn, then I can grab hold of the e-file, which is important. So 
Okay. So, let's see here. Very interesting. Um, so which one do I play? Do I play here? Or do I play here? I can actually check this king first and stay on this diagonal. But then I need to really work on getting, you know what, I could, oh actually, I'm going to play my rook or my queen here first, defending it. And then I'm going to play my rook to e1. See, I'm going to reserve this check here for when I really need it. The other idea here is that I could actually Okay, he's going to take there. I actually have a mating threat here, which um, might allow me to win some material. Um, but again, I have to I have to be very careful. Um, is this check going to get me anything? I don't think so. I think I need to. I want to get. So the the mating threat, of course, is right here. And. I don't know if it's going to happen though. So I'm going to play. See, my back rank is safe. So actually, I've got a couple. We could play rook takes a7. And if he takes here. I still have to be careful here. I think rook takes a7 is safe. My back rank, I think I can defend it. If he takes here, then I can take here, and if he checks me, I bring the rook back. So here, I'm actually... Ah, okay. So, I've got... Okay, bishop to f6 check. He's gonna he's gonna lose his rook, or I've got this check now, and then when he moves here, I've got checkmate. Okay, so there we go. Let's uh, go back and take a look at a couple of the positions, and uh, just kind of go over some of the key points there. So that was a nice. Uh, well, I'm, I'm pleased by the win. Uh, not perfect, but. Uh, I'll take it. Okay, uh, let's take a look at just a couple of the key points in the game. So after here, I played a4, and doing just a little quick analysis, um, Black could have played something like a5, which would have stopped this advance, and probably it would have played b5 uh, here, and then later could have followed up with something like c6. Uh, and I think this would have been okay for Black. I have a little space here, but... It's not really anything to write home about. Um, instead, this is where black played here, and then I was able to pretty much win a pawn outright. So uh, we have to be careful about that in our openings. When we're studying our openings, make sure we're looking at where, you know, there's a reason for certain move orders. And, and in this case, you could think, well, this is just a blunder of a pawn, but uh, I think the blunder was partly due, or at least uh, enhanced by the fact that maybe uh, there's more nuances behind this move order, order that my opponent uh, did not realize. Okay, let's see what else we can uh, we can discuss. Okay, uh, the next part of the game that uh, was, is, I guess, the most uh, critical was this position here. And in this position, uh, because of the threats um, by this knight, I made the decision to play knight to d5. Uh, part of the reason was um, I was thinking d5 was a concept that would be nice, but because of this pin, I was a little worried. And a little analysis um, shows that maybe that would have been uh, a fine move to make, and I'll, I'll show you why here. Um, because here, if he plays knight to e4, uh, I could just take this knight, and then if he plays 
Um, bishop takes a1, well, I get this shot in first. Uh, and after he takes this knight, drop back here. And what I, the position is, um, I think, quite uh, favorable for me because I've given up, um, essentially I've given up the exchange for, let me just count the pawns here, um, for three pawns. So I'm ahead in material, but if you look a little further, this bishop's going to take a few moves to get back into play. Uh, and I've pretty much secured um, secured my position. So um, and now he's got other weaknesses uh, or maintaining weaknesses to, to think about here. I could get this bishop in with check, get it to d4 where it's attacking here. So um, quite... Uh, you know, you know, it would be uh, quite a nice position um, for me. And a couple things to think about with the, so going further in this position. Um, as I look at, let's just go back to the main line here. Uh, what I played in the game was knight to d. D5, but what happens, uh, and it took a little bit to kind of see this, was that now my opponent has F4. So the same idea is that there's this pin on this pawn. I can't take it because, and, and taking it um, with the G pawn would be disastrous. Uh, you could try to see what, what black would do next if you want. But here, black takes over the initiative because he checks this he's going to win this piece at the very least because if i take it well now uh he's got almost an unstoppable i think it's a uh, pretty much an unstoppable uh checkmate um uh, well let's see if i can play something like queen to c4 and he gets queen to g um he gets this in and maybe it's not Totally, totally lost, but it's uh, uh, now it's quite bad. He's going to get this check in and um, pressure it. I mean, even to avoid, um, you know, now he's got moves like this as well. So um, that would be quite dangerous. But if we back it up just a few moves, just to show, to demonstrate here. So I wouldn't take it. I'd have to move my king, and uh, king to h1, for example, and a knight takes d2. After I move my queen out of the way, um, you can just back it up again. And now, let's see, if we do the material count, uh, black is simply up a piece. So, uh, oh, piece, I mean, I got a couple pawns for it, but... Um, the tides would be definitely be turned. Okay, the final uh, position I wanted to clarify here uh, was right here after uh, queen to um, e4. And uh, the idea here was during the game, I played rook 5 to a2. And actually, that was the, the best move to make to get rid of this, uh, this rook. Um, and I, I mentioned that one of the candidates that I rejected fairly quickly was here. Rook takes a7. I just wanted to show you that uh, so you don't have to visualize it. Rook takes a7, and I cannot take this rook. If I take this rook, then rook to e1 is checkmate. And then let's say I move this rook, say, to c1 to attack here. Then um, I think at this point, black is the one that actually has uh, the initiative here. And I think it's going to be a little dangerous here because um, now he can do things like uh, double uh, rooks on the seventh rank here um, against my king so uh, I think I think in this case uh, I made the right decision and uh, but I did want to show that to you hey guys I hope you enjoyed that video uh, if you did please press the like button and a couple of things to just remember is that uh, playing longer games uh, can be very beneficial for your chess uh, and this is especially true if you take the time to analyze them. Uh, in this game, I showed you a couple of the key points. I'm going to go back and look to see if there's any more uh, little gems of knowledge that I can gain. But it's definitely something uh, that you want to make sure you're doing consistently. 
And so uh, with that, uh, if you are new to Better Chess Training, uh, Better Chess Training is about helping you to improve your chess. And uh, I invite you to uh, join me on my journey of chess improvement and allow me to be part of your journey as well. So uh, hit that subscribe button, and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon.